Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of Epstein anomaly. A 44-year-old primary gravida came for a fetal echocardiography with a history of amenorrhea for 9 months. She had gone through multiple congenital abnormality scans at the second trimester where all the reports were normal. She also did an ultrasound scan with Doppler evaluation at 31 week which also showed normal report. That is very unusual. I have checked all the reports and the persons who did ultrasound were very expert. As she was a primary gravida at this age, the patient was quite concerned about the possibility of congenital abnormalities. So she tried her best to exclude with any ultrasound technique that anyone has recommended her. So at the end of 33 week, she had known about the fetal echocardiography. Somehow she found me on Facebook and came to my chamber for a fetal echocardiography evaluation by her own interest. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here we can see the biometry which shows around 32 plus weeks of gestation. She had a large degenerative subserous fibroid arising from the right side of the fundus which can be palpable parabdominally. But as this is a subserous one with degenerative change like you see the heterogeneous texture, it may not be a matter of concern regarding the congenital anomaly. While checking the bipartal diameter, I have seen that the cisterna magnum is dilated. Here you can see the cisterna magnum is around 12 millimeter, which is definitely enlarged. Now let's look at the heart. Here you can see the four chamber view of the heart. It doesn't look normal. You can see it's quite enlarged and you can see this is the tricuspid valve. So this is the left side and this is the right side. The tricuspid valve is not located at its normal position. You see this is the mitral valve but the tricuspid valve is displaced towards the apex. So the right ventricle became smaller and the right atrium became dilated. So this apical displacement of tricuspid valve with right atrial enlargement is known as Epstein anomaly. You see these are the moderator bands and the right ventricle is small so it is also called the atrialization of the right ventricle. Now you see the cusps doesn't look normal they are slightly thickened. So this type of thickening of the cusp may indicate dysplasia also. So we need to check with color Doppler to exclude any presence of tricuspid regurgitation. Here is the picture you can see the cardiomegaly. The transverse diameter of the heart is more than 50% to the transverse diameter of the chest. You can also measure it with cardiothoracic ratio like a circumference measurement but it's okay it looks quite enlarged so it is enlarged. We have tried to measure the axis and it is around 68 degree. The normal value is around 45 degree plus minus 20. So it is slightly deviated to the left. Now here you can see I have drawn a line and you can see from this line distance of mitral and tricuspid valves. You see the tricuspid valve is far away from this line or from the mitral level towards the apex indicating the Epstein anomaly. Now let's put the color Doppler. On color Doppler you can see the right ventricle has a very small amount of blood within and the major part of the blood is getting regurgitated. This is the tricuspid regurgitation. Let me freeze the image and go back a little and here you can see this is the tricuspid regurgitation. Here's the picture, you can see the tricuspid regurgitation. Now you can check this also with the pulse wave Doppler. Here on pulse wave Doppler, you can see the regurgitant flow on tricuspid valve is more than 60 cm per second here. My scale is not up to the 60 here. 
So I have adjusted it and now you can see the regurgitant flow is more than 60 cm per second indicating the tricuspid valve regurgitation. Now we are confident to say it a case of Epstein anomaly. Now the question arises why the previous ultrasound experts who are really expert on ultrasound missed this case. Now when you are getting an Epstein anomaly but there is no cardiomegaly present which happens during mid trimester scan is very difficult to diagnose. When I was scanning this patient the baby rotated a little now you see the tricuspid valve here may look like position normally. Now this is the mitral valve this is the tricuspid valve they almost look like in normal position but the right atrium is now dilated so I am very confident that this is actually an Epstein anomaly and I have checked it from different angles. This is the confusion due to the position of the heart and the absence of cardiomegaly in second trimester you may miss it. So always I prefer doing fetal echocardiography at around 24 weeks or if needed I will go for a follow up at around 30 weeks to ensure that the heart is in a normal situation. Here's another view and you can see this is the tricuspid valve with some dysplastic valves here displaced towards the apex. Another view and you can see this case of Epstein anomaly. If you check carefully you can see some regurgitant flow here on grayscale also. This is due to the high velocity regurgitation. We have also checked the umbilical artery and ductus venosus as there is a tricuspid regurgitation so these vessels should not show normal flow. The umbilical artery was showing high resistant flow and the ductus venosus though the picture is not quite good but you can see this ductus venosus is showing reversed A wave and the reversal is quite high few times. So the fetal condition is not quite good. So in summary there is a right atrial type of fetal cardiomegaly with a left sided axis deviation. There is apical displacement of the tricuspid valve with a lower cooptation point of tricuspid valve into lower right ventricle, not at the atroventricular junction, resulting in atrialization of right ventricle. There is also tricuspid regurgitation. So, these features conclude it as a case of Epstein anomaly. Now, the take home message. In absence of cardiomegaly and upward directed apex, it may become challenging to diagnose Epstein anomaly during mid trimester scan. So, it is wise to make a follow up fetal echo to exclude any cardiac abnormality in suspected or high risk cases. In case of Epstein anomaly, don't forget to check the pulmonary valve also. Due to the right ventricular abnormality, there is also very small amount of flow across the pulmonary valve. Now a small brief about the Epstein anomaly. This is actually the apical displacement of the septal and posterior tricuspid valve leaflets and the co-optation point of the tricuspid valve is lowered into the right ventricle which is resulting in the atrialization of the right ventricle. So the best diagnostic point is the right atrial enlargement and apical displacement of the tricuspid valve. So we get cardiomegaly, often severe, but if it is not present at the mid trimester, it may get missed. There might be the adherence of the septal and posterior leaflets to the underlying myocardium. There may also be the dilatation of the atrialized portion of the right ventricle. Due to the dysplastic condition, there might be the long cell-like or redundant anterior tricuspid leaflet. So this dysplasia with leaflet malposition may cause tricuspid regurgitation. The pulmonary artery is often small or atretic due to the decreased antigrade flow which also should be checked with color doppler along with the tricuspid regurgitation. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and try to follow us on other social platforms. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.